What is up, Sleep Tribe? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Healthy Sleep Revolution podcast. My name is Dr. Magna Dasani. As always, that hasn't changed. And today's episode is all about moms. You know, we talk about a lot, a large portion of this podcast has focused on kids and um, well, adults as well. But as moms, and I know I'm guilty of this, we tend to ignore ourselves. So today is all about you, mom. But before I jump into this exciting conversation with an amazing guest that I have been following forever. Quick reminder for our docs that are listening in, for dentists, any dental providers that are listening in, do not forget to sign up for the Every Is Life Summit coming up September 8th and 9th, right here in Houston. Early bird pricing will end soon. So head over to my website, magnadasani.com slash summit 2023 to make sure you get signed up. And without wasting any more time, let me introduce to you the amazing Dr. Funke Afalabi Brown. Dr. Brown, welcome. How are you? I am so well. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Dasani. We, I'm a big fan, just so you know. So thanks for um, sharing your, your platform with me. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. So you are a sleep MD. Is that correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know from our conversations and me stalking you on social media, um, <laughs> um, I know that uh, you, a large focus is sleep in women, especially sleep in moms and children. Uh, let's talk about that. And how, how did you kind of get on that path? Yeah, I think it was, it was multiple fold. It was my own journey, right? As a physician in training, and I had my kids in training, and I had shame because I was exhausted all the time and it was impacting my performance. And I was not by any stretch of imagination I considered a hero because I loved sleep and I and it impacted me negatively, right? So I and and I had anxiety from that, just from being so sleep deprived, not performing as optimally. And as someone who is a high achiever, you know, I kept just feeling like I was dropping the ball all the time until I started to set the round, right boundaries and I started to really prioritize it and own it that, well, you know what, sleep is my superpower. It's what gets me the energy, the empathy, the motivation. Um, I need to de- de- deliver excellent care without that, you know, hopefully not fraught with errors. And so fast forward, you know, I was doing this for myself and, you know, I just really got intrigued also with sleeping, you know, kids as a pediatrician. And so I moved on and did a pulmonary fellowship because you know there's so many sleep dis- um, breathing disorders that are that affect your sleep and uh, you know and, and then I, I really started hearing that same theme of oh he has asthma and he's coughing all night and everybody's up all night and you know she has you know reflux and is wheezing and I can't sleep because I'm constantly scared or I'm sitting and just watching him stop breathing right and so I was seeing the toll that was taking on moms and so in addition to getting my training my fellowship in medicine, um, you know, seeing them in my clinic, and I'm like, oh my gosh, everybody's exhausted. And, you know, and this is impacting families in such a negative way. Uh, it, um, I needed to step out and say, okay, how can I help these moms? And so helping the kids help moms. So I help the kids sleep and breathe better. I help the moms as well, so that they are not putting themselves on the back burner. So I think I would say, you know, a very winded way to say it was a personal, it was personal for me. And it was also stuff seen in my... Yeah, yeah, that is... <laughs> I think I call it uh, the mom syndrome, right? We forget to take care of ourselves <laughs> because we're so focused on these little human beings we have brought into this world. And yes, we want to take care of our children. But, you know, as my mom always taught me, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So if you can't take care of yourself, um, what do these moms typically present with? You know, when you're seeing um, now, do they find you? Do these moms find you for themselves or do they come see you for their children? And you're like, by the way, I'm looking at you too. What does that process look like in your practice? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So right now with my clinical practice, I'm seeing kids. Um, with sleep issues. In my coaching practice is where moms then come in and it is about, I'm exhausted and it ranges anywhere from moms whose kids are not sleeping because they, you know, they either don't know how to get them to sleep independent. And so nightmare, um, nighttime, bedtime is a mess um, with the pushback and the resistance, co-sleeping or the kids waking up multiple times. Sometimes moms are nursing all night and they, you know, they're, they just have 
have a hard time breaking that cycle. So that's one group of moms I work with. And then the other are, you know, high achievers who are either at work and are just really burnt out because they are doing everything else, trying to meet all the demands of work and life. And, and they're, you know, and then, you know, we then throw in, you have personal growth and you have to develop yourself. And so they really don't have time for them. And so we work on really strategically one addressing mindsets around why sleep actually prioritizing sleep will help you manage your time better, help you be more efficient, help you set those healthy boundaries that people will respect you for and help you perform better. So it's kind of, you know, that whole gamut. Um, and then sometimes just even riffs around kids, like moms that are teenagers who are just like, seems to be, seem to be driving them crazy and really helping them create that bridge to say, you know, your teen doesn't wake up and say, I'm going to ruin everybody's day today. Your teen is exhausted. And so we build bridges, we build relationships by helping restore sleep in the teen, restore sleep in the mom. <laughs> <laughs> and just really help the whole family. Yeah, yeah. I think this is an area that is so, so underlooked because we tend to have like tunnel vision and narrow focus on, it's like I tell my patients, it's like I can look at it with loops, which is going to give me a really fine view, but then I'm missing the panorama around mm -hmm. it. And sometimes that is what we need to focus on. So um, what, what are the common things that you, and of course, I'm not going to ask you to share your entire protocol. We want patients to come see you. <laughs> but uh, what are the, what are some of the places you start um, with on you know the different ages uh, moms yeah. that may see you uh, from what is the youngest that you start helping patients with to uh, we mentioned teenagers so if you yeah. wouldn't mind sharing some of that so you know, for, of course, the clinical is kind of almost cookie cutter, right? They come with the complaint of, I can't, you know, my child's not sleeping. And then we walk through medical issues, behavioral issues, right? If they have autism, ADHD, they have anxiety, we're kind of dealing with all those categories. So I almost feel like that's almost like protocolized. You could get in touch with me. We'll walk through that from a clinical perspective. I prescribe, I do tests, sleep studies, all those kind of things. The, the, the restful sleep MD, the coaching part of me takes a mom that shows up, I'll give you an example with maybe a four month old who is going through sleep regression and she's exhausted because she's going to work. She's going to be starting work soon and she has no clue how she's going to do it because she can't even put the baby down to sleep at night. And so we start off in our sessions one by first setting goals. Like what does a, what does, what does life look like for you? A, a well-rested life look like for you? So we kind of paint a, a picture when we have that initial visit, right? We, we, because I need that because there will be things that will put in place, that's going to stretch you. It's going to maybe stretch your baby a little bit, but having an idea of where we're headed then mm -hmm. helps us build the bridge to get there. And then we customize a plan for a mom who says, you know what, I don't want to hear my baby baby squeak, but I want them to sleep independently to, you know what, I'm done with this. <laughs> I want you to pull the plug. Let's get this going. Uh, so we then build a plan around that, you know, it looks like sleep training and there's so many, of course, there's so much out there, but then I really bring that um, evidence-based approach to say, listen, there's no one size fits all for your family. So we think of their environment, their family values, do they have other siblings at home? And then we work out a plan to help them, you know, help their baby sort of coach their baby pretty much to sleep well. Of course, if they're underlying medical things, then I, I, you know, in coaching, I can't address that, but I can get them connected with treating that. Um, and then we now, you know, within a few weeks, we've handled that within a, you know, maybe three to two to three weeks we've done with that. And then we now say, okay, mom, how do we get you to a place where you are not burning out the minute you step out of the door after maternity leave to get to work? How do we get you you know, getting back in? How do we use sleep as a tool? How do we make sure now that your baby is sleeping and it's no more of an issue that it's not you now sitting in bed, bedtime procrastinating on your phone <laughs> or your mind <laughs> racing about your children's college? Meanwhile, they're still, you know, four months old, right? So then we walk through those sort of mindset coaching processes. How do we set boundaries? So, um, you know, it's a whole, like a whole panoramic view, like you said, of all the areas of their lives that then I can kind of help them build the tools they need to to have that energy, the motivation, the clarity, um, and to really empower them, not just in their sleep confidence, but in their self-confidence as, as they step up. 
Yeah, yeah. I imagine diet and nutrition plays a big role in that conversation as well with you. Um, uh, I know gut health is one that uh, we focus on as well. Um, How does that protocol play into your different age ranges uh, Mm -hmm. for the children to the adults? You know, I have two teenage girls and we're constantly battling over what to put in your mouth because (laughs) when they're tired, like we have, it's Mm -hmm. testing time right now, right? Mm -hmm. We have AP tests and start tests and everything going I mean I know they want to reach for the that junky unhealthy food yeah. for that quick energy yeah. um what, what do those conversations look like for you and um your your children that you work with so we start off with again what the goal is of course if they're already struggling with weight issues or self-confidence we cannot feed that into the mix of where we're headed um if they are you know and i'm speaking for maybe older kids right now of course with the mom aware right if they are you know if they're athlete basketballers or whatever right they play basketball they swim or we're using that, right? I feel like we have to meet our kids where they are. So we find, essentially, I kind of discover, help them discover what their why is. Why would sleep be important? Because for me to say, well, you need eight to 10 hours of sleep. You're only doing seven. Here's the prescription. Get off the screen. Bye-bye. Like, come on. That's not that's not realistic, right? So we, I have to connect with them really emotionally to, oh my goodness, this is something that's been missing, right? And I also help the parents come from a place of grace and empathy. Like your child is having to wake up at their circadian nadir. They're having to wake up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Their bodies, their brains, they're literally at the lowest point or where they're meant to be sleeping. And we're hitting, you know, sending them off in the dark to catch the school bus. So all of a sudden, you know, you can tell like parents just, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, right? And then the kid is like, oh, that's why I feel so crabby, right? So (laughs) it turns into this journey to self-discovery. And then one of the things I talk about is, you know, restful sleep habits don't just start at bedtime, right? You build them right from the moment you wake up. So how you wake up is just as important as, as how you sleep. So then we delve into how do we create a routine for you knowing that, okay, I got to get out of the house at this time. I got to have all these practices after school. Um, This is what I have access to when it comes to lunch and meal times. So we start to think through like, how can we plan, you know, meal times, time to spend outdoors, um, you know, what you're eating, how do we then build that in? And of course, mom is taking notes because she herself is like, oh yeah, me too, right? So <laughs> um, so that's really how we do it because, uh, you know, when they start to realize, oh, it's those hormones that are just all over the place in the evening. That's why I'm grabbing the carrot cake and not the carrot. Oh, okay, you know? And so that, I feel that self-discovery then is like, ah, that's okay. So how do I address this? Now I know right um and i think that's just it plays such a big role than just my giving you 10 practical tips to go do right that little printed sheet of paper means nothing if i don't have action steps to take with it <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know I, I i completely i felt that when you said the circadian rhythm is changing because with teenagers right they're like they're on this huge seesaw where they come yeah. from being our little kids that go to bed and wake up at the time we want them to to where now their body is telling them a whole mm-hmm. different thing but it doesn't help that school wants them there. Like I know my yeah. kids probably want to sleep in and yeah. school's like, you gotta be here at 7 a.m. or 7 30. And what it's the it's midnight for my body right now. Yes, and that is a struggle. And we've been really working on that. Um, this um our start school later organization has done such phenomenal work. And there are some school districts that are really that really get it. But we're understanding now that there is a political um aspect to this. There is like logistics there is people talking about who's going to pay for those extra buses and and how the kids going to do at their teams and games and things like so it's a I wish we could just like say come on guys this is the science we have the research let's move um but it's it's really taking a lot more than that and I encourage moms as well like be an advocate talk to your high school principals talk to your school districts tell them this is this is ruining my kids health it's ruining their mood their emotions their their metabolism their safety, especially if they're driving and they're so sleepy. There's so many levels to this. So um, it's it's definitely, there's definitely a lot of work. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, my sleep empties have a love-hate relationship with melatonin. Where, <laughs> <laughs> where do you stand on that? And it's used for uh, children, especially, you know, it's sadly, it's 
not uncommon for me in a dental practice to have moms come in seeking help for their little ones. And then they'll be like, oh, I have to give my child three gummies every day. And some of the doses they share with me are just, I was like, oh my God, let's find somebody that's going to be able to help you with that. So where mm-hmm. do you stand? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. So I use, I I mean, full disclaimer, it's, it's, a, it's a hormone, right? I I use it in certain situations. Um, I think most of us are aware of the study that just came out. It was a, sort of like a research letter, but then they described the study they did, which really just came out in um, April 2023, where they looked at 30 different formulations of melatonin gummies. And so, of course, it's gummies, meaning that's mostly what we're giving to our kids. Um, and the variability in the in the, what they declared as the concentration was atrocious. Um, if I remember, it went anywhere from, what, 73% of what they said is the label content to something close to 400 and something percent. Like it was incredible. And there's been another study like in 2017 that had showed the same. So literally when you take a gummy and you say this gummy on the label, on the label says it has one milligram of melatonin. You are giving your child anywhere from maybe 40% of the content to up to 500% of what that content is. So we have no clue. And the reason why is because it is not FDA regulated. So you know, anybody, I could, anybody can come up and say, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm marketing this dietary supplement. It's a dietary supplement. So you really don't know. I think what was also more alarming too was some of those gummies had CBD in them. And so just so you know, CBD is not FDA approved in children, except in, I think, three very rare genetic seizure disorders. So I think it's really important that we are just really aware um, as as physicians, as patients um, of what we're doing when we say I'm just going to give a gummy. The kids love gummy. Who doesn't love gummy? I love gummy. So of course they're going to take it. But I think we have to go back to connect. And this is how I'm able to get my clients. If I, if they need to be on it, um, we find the why. Does your child have a neurodevelopmental disorder? Do they have autism? Do they have ADHD? Do they have, you know, there's Williams syndrome. There's all these syndromes and all these genetic or neurocognitive issues that may necessitate some melatonin. Or are you a shift worker? Or do you have delayed sleep with this syndrome? Or gen- lag, right? So we're going back to that. If it's for, you know what, insomnia, and I just feel like I need something, then we go back to why is the dependence? Let's switch your dependence from the gummy. Let's switch it to you being fully reliant in being able to generate sleep by yourself because your body is capable of it. So we go back to the mindset of you can do it. We just need the right tools, the right strategies. Um, And then if there's situations where you do need to use it, then I usually will recommend if you're going to get it, get a brand that's verified. Like they have the one that's like you, usually they'll have the label USP verified. Or or get a farmer grade brand because then at least you know to some degree what you're getting, what you're giving your patients, what you're giving your um, and don't do it without the help of a or guidance of a doctor. But then I say that I realize most doctors are not even aware of this too. So empower them. Now you're listening to this podcast. Say, oh, before you give me that melatonin, listen to Dr. Desani's podcast real quick so that you know we can be sure that you know what's going on. Right. And and I think it's more important for people to understand this is not a long term, you know, even if your doctor yeah. prescribes it, it's to yeah. get you past a certain point. It's, mm-hmm. it's not something you take like you would your multivitamin on a long term basis, you know, yeah. um, and that's where the disconnect happens. Wow, this is great information. Um, as we are coming to an end of our episode, Dr. Brown, how how can patients find you? How can these moms that are exhausted and tired and have been looking for somebody like you that can help them? how can they work with you yeah no this has been fun thanks for having me um so i am on um, social media on Instagram, Restful Sleep MD. Um, and so there I share a lot of tips around things you could do. Of course, it's, it may be hard to parse it together, um, but it is helpful, a good place to start. Um, and then on my website, uh, if you you can connect with me and let's really have a talk. I have, uh, I offer a 30 minute, co- just a free consultation call to hear what your struggles are and how I can help. And then if you are going to be a fit for my program, which is a one-on-one coaching program um, where we then delve into this and really practicalize it and 
tailor strategies for you. And my website is www.restfulsleepmd.com. And so um, if you also jump on there, I have a, you know, a checklist, a sleep checklist of, you know, those healthy sleep habits, sleep hygiene things we hear about. I really have distilled it into six evidence-based steps that you, I just want you to checklist, make sure you're doing those things first, because sometimes it's the low hanging fruit that gets in our way of getting the good sleep we want. So that's always a great place to start. Um, that it sounds very basic, but I can assure you it's not 20 stuff. It's six things that I tell you always, always impact your sleep. So you can grab that as well if you subscribe to my newsletter. Perfect. So for those listening in, we will have all of these links to her website, her social media handles in the show notes. So make sure you guys check that out. And one last thing before we jump off, what are your top three tips for moms? Um, as to how they can get restful sleep. Absolutely. So the first I would say, as, as much as it sounds cliche, is consistent because that's the way that you will essentially train your body to know when the, when it's supposed to sleep in and it's when to be awake and when to be awake. So, and you know, if it's hard for you to even set a consistent bedtime, make sure that you wake up at about the same time every day. So that is really key because it helps sort of re-anchor your internal clock to say, okay, the clock starts again. So that's one thing. Another thing I always ask moms, especially busy moms who are exhausted and drained, is to set out time for a routine for yourself. Um, it it may you may feel like I don't have time I just want to grab jump into bed but if you do without really decluttering your mind with a routine that's calming and relaxing for you you're probably going to go into bed with those racing thoughts which will then wake you up either at 1 a.m or at 3 (laughs) a.m so having a routine is very helpful and what you put into that routine will vary for what gives you joy what gives you pleasure but know that it has to be something calming and not stimulating and then the important piece of it for those of us that may need caffeine or you know need stimulants or things to get through your day because you're so busy um is if you're going to need caffeine i want you to go back first of all figure out why do i need caffeine do i enjoy the flavor or is it that i need it as as a way for me to stay awake and alert all day um you want to try to cut back on it at least you know six hours or eight hours before bed so maybe after 1 p.m you probably want to avoid it um that's something that uh, it's been a big game changer for a lot of my clients who have coffee and and and, and with desserts in the evening and just wonder why their mind is racing or their body, <laughs> their, their heart is racing at that time. So those are just a few um, of my of my three tips that I would share. That's practical and you could just, you could get started today. That's amazing. Thank you for dropping so much knowledge. Oh my gosh, my brain is racing now, but thankfully it's early in the day <laughs> to be able to process this. I appreciate you taking the time coming on and sharing all of this. And uh, for those listening in, you know, this episode has a lot of value, especially for you moms, or if you have a mom in your life with Mother's Day coming up, this is a perfect episode to share. So do not hesitate to share it with your loved ones. As always, leave us a review and I will see you guys next time.